Welcome, it's Facts You Don't Know. If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts that will definitely make you smarter and more. Well, and for make sure to subscribe and active the notification bell so you don't miss anything. They warned me not to adopt that child, but when they did, they couldn't hold back their tears. It was three in the morning and Emma couldn't sleep for the third night in a row. That memory haunted her over and over again. Every time she closed her eyes, she felt like life was punishing her once again. She couldn't help but remember the face of her little angel a moment before that beam fell right in front of her. Followed by this, a curtain of fire and ash silenced Gabrielle's cries. That was all her motherly heart could bear. A scream of utter hopelessness tore through the air and moments later, Emma fell unconscious. Adrian, her husband, who had gone to get the baby's diapers, could not believe his eyes when he got home. Immediately, she dropped everything she had in hand and ran into the burning house. Halfway through, he was able to find Emma, who seemed no longer breathing. He lifted her into his arms and, desperately looking around, he couldn't see beyond. The fire prevented him from crossing the threshold of his little one's room. His lungs were not giving more, and he had to make the most difficult decision of his entire life. He turned and pulled his wife out. He attended to the grass and immediately ran in search of his son. Unfortunately, life was against him and flames of fire reached the entrance of the house, blocking the way. In the distance, I can hear screams of the firefighters approaching the place. But little by little, everything around him was fading, as well as the life of his firstborn. The firefighters did everything possible to reduce the flames. When they succeeded and began the search for the little one, it was too late. Adrian got the news solo. His wife had fallen into a temporarily induced coma. The poor thing had woken up screaming and the doctors had decided that they should put her mind at rest. A few weeks later, Adrian had the difficult task of informing her of the irreparable loss. Eight long years had passed since that event, and despite having traveled all over the country looking for the best specialists, the woman had not been able to find calm in her heart. She and her husband had gone to every psychologist they'd been recommended, and had even sought resignation in the church where the father, sympathizing with their situation, had told them about many children who were looking for a home. Emma, in truth, was not convinced of the idea. Her heart was still crying out for her loss. But her husband, who had put aside his own pain to deal with her recovery, had tearfully asked her to give that option a chance. Emma had agreed to visit to the orphanage in town. Adrian had smiled brightly after many years. It was at that moment that she realized that she'd not stopped to think about what her husband wanted and what he wanted was to be a father again. The day of the visit arrived and Emma felt very nervous. She'd changed her clothes countless times. She didn't know why, but something deep inside her told her that she'd have the most important date of her life. He looked at himself in the mirror again and just took a deep breath. He was preparing for that great moment. Upon arriving at the orphanage, the spouses took their brother. It was a very difficult step for both of them, but upon entering the place, all the nerves and doubts they had totally disappeared. The atmosphere was far more lively than they could imagine. The children ran happily, left one side to the other. They no longer knew where to look. Each child was a different story, and although they had theirs, Emma's heart immediately found the one. A little boy who, unlike the others, was very quiet at the end of the great hall. The boy was no more than nine years, was assembling a pile of colored cubes. The truth was it seemed very intelligent. Emma walked over to him. Big blue eyes stared back at her. Her heart leapt for joy, and her motherly instinct wanted to protect him. The hours passed, and the two were delighted with that child. He was quite reserved, but very intelligent. At the end of that visit, they approached the reception of the place and asked to adopt him. The receptionist looked at each other in surprise. "'Please go talk to the director,' said one of them. The director looked a bit tense. When they came in, she said, "'Sit down, please.' The two gladly sat down and asked for the child's information, to which the director replied, I regret to inform you that this child's case is a very special case. The parents looked at each other in surprise at the way she spoke of the child. As the little one came to us with many traumas, and unfortunately we have no more information about his past. She continued, She's caused us a lot of problems, and usually has a very distant attitude, and doesn't allow anyone to approach her. Emma and Adrian decided to ignore this situation because, after a long time, they were totally convinced that this boy needed them, and they were willing to give him all the love in the world. The couple took the boy home. The little boy looked everywhere from the car window. He was very shy, and they wouldn't let him hug him. Emma vowed that she'd do her best to earn his trust. 
So time passed, little by little. The little one got used to them, and before long he seemed too comfortable with them. He was by no means the child the headmistress had described to them. Emma noticed that the boy only wore shirts with very long sleeves and did not let him touch their arms. And although she didn't want to bother them, she wondered why. One night while preparing the bathtub, Emma was finally able to discover the boy's secret. Large scars covered his arms. The boy, realizing her presence, immediately looked for a way to cover himself so that she wouldn't see him. But it was too late. Emma couldn't believe what her eyes were looking at. That child had suffered severe burns. From one moment to the next, the memories invaded her and her eyes filled with tears. She knelt in front of the little boy and, looking into his eyes, she could recognize in it her little boy, the same one she thought she'd lost sometime. I'm with you, my son, she said. I will not leave you again. Her heart was crying out convinced. The boy was relieved. At last, he'd been able to find a mother who would not reject him for being a monster, as he said or as he thought. Slowly, she wrapped her arms around his neck and prayed that it wasn't a dream. The next day, the parents immediately went to the orphanage in search of the answers. The director of that place met with them and told them the story they expected to hear. The child came to us with only two years of age, she began. Before coming here, he had undergone multiple operations due to a fire in which he sadly lost his parents, he concluded. Emma did not come out of her astonishment. The story was too similar. Perhaps the universe was giving her her beloved son back. Convinced that the child was hers, they decided to take a DNA test where the great truth was finally discovered. Friends, effectively, that child so sweet and tender was the very child of her eyes. His mother's heart was never wrong, and he thanked heaven and her husband for having convinced him to attend that important appointment that he met with the little one. Emma was constantly amazed at how life had changed in that house. The laughter of that little boy filled the place. Made a mother instinct, she swore to protect him forever. Thus ends today's story. Tell us in the comments, what would you do for your children? If you like this story, please share it with your friends and family, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss more stories like this one. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.